A few weeks back, everyone was talking about Vanilla OS, how it's such a great distro, how it's the future of Linux distros, and don't get me wrong, I think the maintainer deserves all of the attention he's getting. It seems like a really cool project. But one thing I didn't really see in all that noise is how the distro actually functions. Everyone knows at a surface level, it's an immutable Linux distro based on Ubuntu. But what does immutability mean in this context, and how is that immutability actually being achieved? So most of the immutable Linux distros out there are using a system known as libos tree, formerly just called OS tree. Things like Silverblue, things like Kinoite, Kinoe, however you're supposed to say the name, and most of the other options out there with one shining exception, the distro everyone's talking about, Vanilla OS. So previously Vanilla OS used a system known as Almost and then replaced this with something known as AB Root. Now, if you've never heard of these projects, it kind of makes sense because both of these were made in-house for use with Vanilla OS. But how does AB Root actually work? It's really easy to make an immutable system. All you do is make every file, every folder read-only, nothing can be changed, and there you go. The problem with this is it might be fine with a industry system controlling like an factory arm, for example, where nothing needs to change. But for a desktop system, you generally want to be able to, you know, save files, so you don't want to have your home directory be immutable, but you still want to have the immutability on your root, on your boot, on the core of the system, the thing that you don't really want the users to be randomly changing. And the way that AB root achieves this is actually as a part of the name, AB. It actually makes use of two root petitions. Because even in an immutable distro, there are times the root needs to be modified. Let's say you're installing a driver, you're doing a system update, things like that. So upon first booting the system, you are going to be loaded into the A root, otherwise known as the present root. The other root, the B root, that is the future root. And by using a B root, you can run a command on that future root. This can be something non-destructive like an ls command, or this can be something that is going to modify some files like apt install. You can install a driver, the flatpak application, or something else like that. Now the really important thing about running a command with ab root is these commands are going to be a transaction, and these transactions are going to be atomic. Now, without getting too deep into database terminology, things like atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, the key point here is every time you run a command with AB root, that command is going to be the entire command. There will never be a situation where something is half run, like a file is half deleted, a package is half installed. It is all or nothing. If the command cannot be completed successfully, it will not be run. Now, I know I used the example of installing a package. This is just an easily understood example of modifying the root, but it's not the only thing you can do. Basically, anything you want to do that involves modifying that future root can be run through AB root. If you want to go and modify your kernel parameters, go and delete a file, basically anything you want to do is done through this system. But now you have a problem. All these changes you made are in a different root. Nothing that you've modified has been applied to the root you're currently using. So basically what you have to do is reboot your system. And when you reboot, something really cool happens. The two roots are actually swapped. That A root, which was the present root, now becomes the future root. And the B root, which was the future root, now becomes the present root, allowing you access to all of those changes you made. But this still causes a bit of a problem. The roots aren't synced together, none of those changes you made are applied to the old present. So, 
we just apply them. And this is exactly why only atomic complete commands can be run, so that now when the roots get synced together, all that needs to be done is rerun all those same commands, and the other root is in the exact same state. This system also has some really interesting implications for doing system updates. These are handled by a system called VSO, otherwise known as the Vanilla System Operator. This will perform weekly and monthly updates in the background without any user intervention and won't affect the user as they are working, because the same rules apply here, they are not made to the present root. The updates are applied to the future root, and if for some reason the update isn't successful, you won't have some weird half update applied. It's just not going to be applied. But on the flip side, if the update is successful, the user doesn't really need to do anything. They can just keep using their system as they always would be using, and then when they have some free time overnight, when they turn the system off, when they get a chance to reboot their system, that's all they need to do to make sure the update is getting applied to the route they're actually using. Now, with all that being said, even though you can run any command with AB root, it is just Ubuntu at the core, and you can install anything you want, you probably shouldn't overuse AB root. And this isn't just me saying, ah, you must use the system the way that I say you must use it. The reason why you probably shouldn't do it is because of the size of the roots. Vanilla OS ships two roots, both of them are 20 gigabytes each. And I know for some users, like, you know, an old ThinkPad user, that might sound like a lot. For Ubuntu, that's not exactly a lot, and it can very quickly get filled up if you're trying to install everything through that system. Save running the AB root commands for things that have to be done in AB root. Installing drivers, That's pretty <laughs> other core system. Anything that cannot be done with Apex or DistroBox directly. If it's something like installing Steam, install it in the flat pack, install it in DistroBox, don't install it as a system package. And one last thing I should note is even though AB Root was made specifically for vanilla OS to address its concerns, it's in no way tied to vanilla OS. The project is available on the GitHub and you can use it with other distributions. Now, considering it's still in a fairly early state, there may not be documentation for doing this everywhere you might want to do it, but it can be done. And if you feel like it does a better job than OS tree, feel free to go and use it. I forgot to record an outro for this. So thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, uh, like the video, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you really like the video, want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out the Patreon, subscribe, Stelly Berapay, linked in the description down below. Uh, that's going to be it for me, and I'm out.